Aloha. Uh, I was just about to do an interview on Press TV. It was going to be about a half hour long. Um, and, and normally I, you know, I mean, I do interviews regularly, so I don't generally care massively about doing them, but I always try and make the most out of each opportunity. This time, uh, I really did want to talk, and I was very happy to have 30 minutes uh, planned to do that because this game that's being played with Syria, uh, well, it's an indication of what I have been saying for many years and which astute observers would have known for a long time. I'm certainly not the genius in the room who figured this out, but I'm one of the people who's been sounding the alarm. The powers that be want a third world war. They want a third world war. The incentive and motivation for them to have a third world war has been there for many years. And I have my own ideas as to why it has not happened to this point. Uh, but that gets into conjecture and opinion that I think really uh, takes us away from the point, the most important point, which is this is a very dangerous game being played, has been played for a long time. When I was in my 20s, over 20 years ago, I came to that realization. I understood this is madness. This is crazy. We, we are attempting the total destruction of our planet and... And ecologically, we're also, you know, biodiversity loss, pollution, all this deforestation, topsoil erosion, we can go on and on and on. I realize this is not sustainable, and it's fucking crazy. How is it possible that we reach this point as human beings that this is what we do? We, we truly are competing for Idiot of the Universe Award, really. Uh, and the award goes to human beings, homo sapiens, men and women of planet Earth, have managed to destroy everything that they were offered. So those of you who are saying, oh, it's never going to happen, can't happen, they don't have nukes, or whatever your thing is, no, I'm sorry. If even there is one shred of doubt as to whether or not a third world war is possible and nuclear annihilation is possible, even one little tiny shred of doubt, then we as men and women have an obligation to do something about that. And to make that possibility impossible. Because for me, the only thing that would be acceptable is a world in which we do not have the capacity to destroy everything as soon as our puppet, prostitute, political bastards uh, carry out the orders of those who hide in the shadows. So if you don't know this, I am definitely being redundant for people who know this stuff, but the powers that be are those that physically control things, and this is where we get into endless arguments about, no, 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 it's not them, it's them. No, it's not them, it's them. This is not really relevant. It's fascinating, but those who are controlling the show right now that we can identify, provably so, are those that control finance. And this, by the way, leads us to who you can't talk about. Because who controls finance? If it was Muslims who controlled finance, could I talk about it with you? Well, truthfully, no, because then they might be just as tyrannical, but they're not. It's not Muslims running the show. It's not Muslims who control finance. Who controls finance? And by the way, to all you Christians, especially you Christian Zionists out there, do you know what Jesus did in the temple and how he felt about the money changers? Do you know? Do you remember that at all? Do you know how your Bible, the Schofield Bible, has been perverted so that you can become nothing but chumps to support Israel? At the, to the extent that you're able and willing to sacrifice American sons and daughters to the tune of 22 American service members a day committing suicide. And now, you're going to send them off to Syria, are you? Because we have to do that, right? Because we care about the Syrian people. And Bashar al-Assad, let's get into this. You seriously believe that Bashar al-Assad is a complete and total idiot? It's Bashar al-Assad and the Syrian army and military, along with Iran, Russia, and Hezbollah, that have effectively wiped out ISIS, or almost completely, despite all of the effort and investment and support and protection of yours truly, the United States of America, Britain, and of course our best friend and allies in the Middle East, that would be Israel and Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, as far as I'm concerned, when Donald Trump sold billions 
what, 350 billion, whatever. It's a, it's a deal for 100 plus billion dollars worth of weapons to these provable head chopper, Wahhabi, fake Muslim, crypto Jew background basis. Uh, the only nation in the world named after a family, Saudi Arabia, as an act of treason. And this gets us to our Trump acolytes. <sighs> Do you deny that Donald Trump was in debt to the Jewish bankers? Do you deny that? Because if, if you do, you're, you're just not thinking at all. Period. End of story. You're in denial. Cognitive dissonance. Okay? Because Donald Trump was in debt to the bankers. He was. To the tune of a billion dollars. Very well documented. No bullshit there. So, do you honestly think that the bankers bailed him out of his $1 billion personal debt so that he could go do the right thing. Oh, no, no, no. You've adopted a much more morphine, ever-changing reality. So he's playing 4D chess. Ah, yes. And in that 4D chess game, he's appointing Bolton, you know, as, as the <laughs> head of the NSA. Yeah, because Bolton, that's really clever. Yeah, that'll convince the enemies who he's fighting against secretly that, oh, no, he's on our side. So he put Bolton in there. And, and now... Now he's not playing 4D chess. I'm hearing some of you say, oh, shit, they got to him, did they? They, they, they? they got to him. Now they've threatened his life or they've threatened his family. So now, shit, man, they got... What's going to be next when he, you know, is ordered to press the button and, and we launch? Hopefully, Russia's technology is so sufficient that they can neutralize. I mean, there are reports, of course, that... That they're, they're, none of our American, uh, you know, mass murder uh, weapons... Are, are actually hitting targets, uh, that would be pretty pretty amazing if Russia doesn't even need to fire at us but can just neutralize uh, our weapons of mass destruction. That would be kind of a beautiful thing, I have to say. Um, hopefully their technology is that good. Hopefully these weapons aren't hitting their target. Uh, but are you Trump acolytes then going to say, yeah, Trump Trump didn't actually hit anything. He's just appearing to 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 play hard and and you know deal a blow to the russians and whatnot is that what you're going to adopt next trump is not your fucking savior please so many of you who i love and respect really i'm not going to name you because i don't want to play the name game here but really i do i love and respect you i uh, on so many different levels but man come on it takes a man or a real man or a woman to acknowledge when you're wrong you know trump is not going to save america please stop that now or whatever, man. You're going to paint yourself in that corner. So Trump works for the bankers who bailed him out to the tune of a billion dollars. And now, and now, uh, you know, they're, they're telling him, they're ordering him. And, you know, of course, I, 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 I almost feel crazy to even talk about this accusation of chemical weapons and Bashar al-Assad doing this. I mean, it's so insulting and so stupid that to even get into a serious debate about whether or not Bashar al-Assad would use chemical weapons on his own people when he's clearly won the war and actually moving towards the next step of getting the fucking U.S. out of there uh, and, and can, taking control over the sovereign lands of Syria and getting these head chopper bastards out of here that we paid. You know, Americans, again, do you know this? Christians in particular. We financed, we financed these head choppers. We did. Have you ever seen these videos of these head choppers and what they do? The two Christian bishops, the video I watched where they, their heads were cut off with a buck knife? Pretty serious shit. We pay for that. Can you imagine if that kind of stuff happened to your loved ones? We pay for that. Saudi Arabia is the ideological and financier of that stuff. Our good friend. Who's slaughtering people in Yemen right now? The poorest people in the Middle East being slaughtered, and no one even talks about that. Really. It's just a bunch of sand niggers. Let's be honest here. And a bunch of fucking sand niggers. And we don't give a shit about them, do we? Oh, but our leaders pretend like they care about them. And even after Iraq, I mean, let's get further into this. You know, we fucking leveled Iraq. Millions of orphans. I've met many of them. You know... Millions of refugees. We see the repercussions on Europe. You think that shit's an accident? I've said this over and over again. Oded Yanan's a strategy for Israel in the 1980s. America 
And all those in the military, I've said this before, I say it again. You want to keep being Israel's bitch? Seriously. Is that okay with you? You want to be a bitch for an Israeli Jewish supremacist state that uses you as cannon fodder to be able to carry out the greater Israel project so that Israel can expand. You want to be a chump and a bitch for that? Well, don't you dare play yourself off as some sort of American patriot. Don't you fucking dare. You're an idiot and a chump. And you have a president named Trump. Chump and Trump. Fucking make a poem out of it. That's about the best you can do. Get real. You need to refuse your orders. If they send you off to Syria, you need to refuse your orders. And I mean top levels, low levels. And you will be the heroes of humanity in so many people's eyes if you do that. But if you go down that path of following your fucking orders to be nothing but a chump and a mass murderer, to go kill a bunch of fucking innocent people in order so that Israel can expand and become the next empire while your nation of America is flushed down a fucking toilet. Because empires never fall, actually. They just morph into something else. Used to be the British Empire, became the American Empire, and these psychopaths are running it all. They want to make Israel the next empire. Moving the embassy to Jerusalem? What's that about? Is that 4D chess as well? Yeah. Give me a break. And to the Palestinian brothers and sisters out there, I'm so sorry I have not said more. Look at you. Love and respect to you, man. I knew, and I've said it many times before, you go ahead and kill. You're going to need to kill every last Palestinian because if there's even one living and breathing, they ain't going to give up. You're never going to fucking take that away and you're never going to get to exterminate all of them. In fact, it's Israel that is imploding. To my Palestinian brothers and sisters, and I'm so honored as a Palestinian citizen naturalized, I, I, my love and allegiance is always to you. Just do your best to stick together. Israel's imploding. Just stick together as best you can. Really, you got it, man. You're going to win. You are going to win. There is no room in a better world for this insanity, this criminal entity, this no extradition treaty, blood diamond, fucking sex trafficking, uh, illicit trade in nuclear weapons, uh, genocide, ethnic cleansing, you, you name it, pornography. We go on and on and on. There's no room in a better world. For an obscene nation like that, which is based on the theft of Palestine from an innocent people who committed no crime, nothing related to World War II and the false mythical bullshit history we were taught there as well. Israel is living on borrowed time. So to my Palestinian brothers and sisters, please don't lose sight of that. Do your best to stick together and work out your internal issues and just let Israel fucking implode. In the meantime, many of you are being killed, so I, I'm sorry. It's easy to say that from the outside. I don't mean to marginalize or diminish the pain and suffering of losing loved ones. The courageous men and women of Palestine who refuse to bow. And so, you know, I know that's not easy. It's easier for me to say, but, you know, hey, love and respect to you. Just do the best you can. Please don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. And know that so many of us are with you and we will never abandon you. Uh, we will never abandon you. So anyway, I, I felt the need to make this video. I don't normally make a point of, you know, getting videos out there, but we are in very dangerous times right now. This could literally, we could see a mushroom cloud rise, especially if you're in an American city uh, or London even, or, you know, these nations, France, where you're antagonizing Russia. What a joke. Let's be honest there too. The Russians are tough. They ain't no pussies, man, and they can fight back. And in a fair fight, in a fair fight, you put us Yanks up against the, the Ruskies, dude, they will beat the shit out of us. I don't care how tough you think you are. They're fucking way tougher than we are, and they're heavily armed. This ain't Iraq, it ain't Afghanistan, it ain't Libya, it's Russia. And they've got balls, and they've got the fucking arms to defend themselves. And these puppets, these political prostitutes, who were insulting you with false flag bullshit fake chemical attacks to justify yet another regime change policy, which is just a disguised version of expanding Israel, greater Israel. Enough now. I am sure enough of us know what we need to know. And world citizen, I honestly, I wish I could launch at this moment. It's almost there. It's getting there. There's important stuff there. This is not about uh, me and my grandstanding and, you know, getting what I want. This is about changing this world for the better. And if somebody can initiate something that I can see and we can see, let's, let's unite behind this and do this. 
I'll fucking do that in a heartbeat, man. But if no one does that, if no one sets that up, something that I think, you know, we can all contribute to and actually affect a better world, well, then I'm going to present my own thing. That's why I did it in the first place. So uh, those of you who stuck by me, who believe in, in, in what I'm doing, who know that I'm sincere, love and respect to you. Thank you so much. My enemies, you know, those who buy into lies, fraud and theft and all that kind of stuff, love and respect to you. I don't really respect your conclusions or judgments or playing God with me, but listen, you've been duped. The truth will come out. Eventually, I will do what I need to do. I will finish off my mission in life, my primary mission in life, get this thing launched. And at that time, good luck to you holding your position. Absurd. I did not do what I've done in this world so that I can make a fucking a bit of money uh, conning people. And those who buy into that stuff, really what you're doing is projecting your own immorality on me. And I know that. So, God love you. You know, I don't take it personally. Par for the course. I would have always expected such things and worse. Uh, but at the end of the day, we need to find a way to come together meaningfully and exercise our real power, which we relinquished a long time ago. And one last note on that, the cryptocurrency phenomena and, you know, getting outside of the central banking system. Gotta love that. There'll be a lot of smoke and mirrors along the way, a lot of deception, a lot of things that'll take us down the garden path and lead us to a dead end. But for sure, taking uh, uh, control of our own lives and destinies and creating our own financial monetary policies and systems and abandoning for good the Rothschild, Talmudic, Jewish supremacist, uh, central banking system, uh, there would never be a better world with that. And this phenomenon is growing so fast, and it ain't no accident that we are so close now to World War III. Because the linchpin of tyranny is the monetary financial system. And as more and more people realize that, and start to, instead of resist the central banking system, and much more powerfully, proactively carry out policies that don't even need the central bank. We can make the central banks irrelevant. It's no coincidence that we're on the verge of a third world war as more and more people figure this out. In fact, it is a direct result of people understanding the power we have. And make no mistake about it, it was always going to come down to this. So let us make sure in these very dangerous times that we do what we need to do. We are capable of creating a better world. Make no mistake about that. So let's fucking do it. If not for ourselves, for our children and future generations.